Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to talk about NMR spectroscopy. NMR stands for Nuclear Magnetic Resonance, and it's an extremely important tool that chemists use to determine chemical structure. Now the purpose of an NMR is we take an unknown uh, sample, we place it in an NMR tube, and it's placed inside of a, a superconducting magnet, a very, very strong, powerful magnet that needs to be cooled to, uh, to very low temperatures in order to have its uh, properties. We're going to apply some energy, so like all spectroscopy, uh, spectroscopic methods, we're going to analyze our sample by uh, radiating with some kind of energy and then observing how it interacts with that energy. In this case, we're using radio frequency waves. So these are very, very low energy waves, uh, something on the order of 60 megahertz to all the way up to uh, 900 megahertz. These instruments just get, keep getting more and more powerful. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the larger the, the uh, instrument, the more sensitive it is, uh, the, the more detail you can get. So, um, but, but very often a 60 megahertz NMR would be all you need to, to get a lot of very interesting spectroscopic data and structural data. So we're going to uh, uh, use radio frequency waves to uh, produce an NMR spectrum. And so this is an example of what a spectrum looks like. So we're going to be learning today what are all the details of the spectrum and what can we learn about the structure by looking at a spectrum. And then we're going to learn how to interpret that to come up with an actual molecular structure. Uh, M NMR is an incredibly powerful tool for use in the laboratory. Uh, it's also used in the medical field. Uh, MRIs, are, are, that stands for magnetic resonance imaging, uses the same technology. Uh, it's not called NMR in the medical field because the use of the word nuclear uh, can be a little scary for patients to think about it, but if you've ever had an MRI, you get uh, inserted into a tube uh, and you hear lots of clunking and noises going around as, uh, as you, uh, you're exposed to the radio waves and then the results are, are analyzed. So we're going to see how we can use these uh, spectra in the laboratory. Let's talk a little bit about the theory of NMR and what's going on, how, how, we, can, how we get uh, the spectrum is generated. Okay, and if you think of uh, a, a nucleus of, a, um, of an atom, certain nuclei have a magnetic moment. And that means they behave like little tiny magnets. So they have a spin. The spin can be either plus one half or minus one half is the way we can think of it. So if you imagine uh, just a collection of, of, of uh, atoms, or, or you can have these nuclei uh, have their spins in all random uh, distributions. Okay, all of these are equal in energy. Now if you take that sample though, and you apply an external magnetic field, remember that's the first step in our NMR is to place a sample inside of a, a very powerful magnet. What's gonna happen is all the nuclei are going to, uh, with magnetic moments, are going to align themselves along the same, in the same direction as that applied magnetic field. And th then there's only two possible orientations they can have. They can either be aligned with the field pointing in the same direction or aligned against the field pointing in the opposite direction. So we, um, these spin states now are uh, only two possibilities. These two states have different energies. Um, the, the ones in which they're aligned with the field, we describe that as the alpha spin state, and those are going to be lower in energy. Those that are aligned against the field are described as beta, and those are higher in energy. Now the populations of of nuclei in these two states is very similar, but there is a slight excess of the nuclei with the alpha spin state where they're aligned with the magnetic field. What we're going to do after placing our sample in the magnet is we're going to uh, pulse it with some energy, uh, that radio frequency energy, and some of that energy is going to be absorbed in certain situations. And what's going to happen is we are going to induce a spin flip in which uh, a nucleus that is aligned with the field is going to accept that energy uh, and absorb that energy, we call that resonating, and it's going to uh, now have the beta spin state. It's gonna be higher in energy. We're gonna pulse it with some energy, and then we're going to let that come back down to its original state, and uh, when that energy is released, we call this process relaxation, after letting the uh, sample relax, we observe um, you know, which, which frequencies have been absorbed, and we can generate a spectrum. Now, 
In order for this process to work, you have to have a nucleus with a, uh, an odd uh, spin number. You have to have a, uh, like a one half uh, is the case that we have in, in these nuclei. And so it turns out that protons, ordinary hydrogens, the normal isotope of hydrogen, has a spin state of one half, as does the isotope of carbon known as C13, also certain isotopes of nitrogen and uh, fluorine. So uh, this is very convenient because uh, if we're studying organic structures, we, uh, we have in all of our molecules, we have carbon atoms, we have hydrogen atoms. And so by investigating the hydrogen atoms and the carbons that types of carbons that we have in our structure, we can figure a lot out about the actual structure and how it, uh, these atoms are connected to one another. So when we take a look at a spectrum, here's an example of a, of a spectrum. There's a lot of information that's buried in here, and one by one we're going to break these down and learn more about them. Okay? One of the things we're going to see is, is the number of signals. How many signals are there in the spectrum? Right? Here's the, here, the, here are two signals. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. So the number of signals that we have is going to tell us something about the different types of hydrogens in our structure. Now, uh, we're going to be starting with proton NMR and uh, with the, just looking at the, the normal isotope of hydrogen, we describe that as proton NMR. And uh, this is an example of what a proton NMR looks like. So the first thing is the number of signals that tells us how many unique types of hydrogens there are in the structure. The next thing we're going to look at is the integration. We're going to look at the size of these peaks. How big are they? That's going to give us some indication of how many hydrogens there are giving rise to that signal or that resonance. The next thing is our, that we'll look at is the chemical shift. And that's asking the question, where on this range is the peak occurring? Okay, So you see our numbers here are kind of 0 to 10 or so. And the location on this spectrum tells us a lot about the structure as well. It's, uh, these are called delta values. They're given in parts per million. And the location tells us something about um, the electronic environment of it. Is it a very electron-rich environment, electron-poor environment, and so on? OK, and finally, we're going to look very closely at the peaks and the shapes of those peaks uh, to, to, see, to identify what's known as a splitting pattern. Is it a single peak? Is it split up into two or three peaks? That's going to tell us something about the neighboring hydrogens on the structure. So you'll see we're going to be able to put our pieces together depending on uh, these, these splitting patterns. Okay, uh, uh, and we'll explore each of these one at a time.